Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and whichever time you're watching this, welcome to SSC and welcome to the 28th day of Static GK Quiz Show in which we shall be discussing scientific names, polity, and government schemes. All these are the continuations from the previous sessions. So there are a total of 20 questions, and I request everyone to please participate in the quiz as at the end of each question you will be given a 10 seconds timer during which you can answer the question in the live chat box if you're watching the premiere and if not to answer in the comment box okay so let's proceed the pdf of entire series it will cost you 300 rupees where you get admission in an exclusive whatsapp group as well so uh, this is it for this send a message to 77970586596 for the pdfs both digital read and printable as well okay so first topic polity continuation from previous day day 27 the first question okay the answer got revealed in the first question itself the Question is, who among the following is the first law officer of the government of India? This was easy, okay, it's attorney general, but uh, this is important. This question was asked in under secretary prelims 2017, okay. Attorney general is the first law officer of India. Let's see about all other options, okay. Uh, what are the all other options? CAG, solicitor general, attorney general, and advocate general, what are they? First of all, uh, CAG, uh, let's see it in detail. The full form of CAG is Comptroller and Auditor General. Now, the Comptroller and Auditor General of India is the Supreme Audit Institution of India. So, if somebody asks you that which is the Supreme Audit Institution of India, then you need to answer Comptroller and Auditor General. And it was established under Article 148 of Constitution. Now, from this, there can be another question that from which article of Indian Constitution uh, CAG has the provision, okay? And who is the CAG right now? Who is the Chief Audit Institution of India, Chief Audit Officer of India? Then he is Girish Chandra Murmu, okay? Girish Chandra Murmu is the present CAG of India as on December 2022, okay? Like uh, when I'm uploading this video, the Comptroller and Auditor General is Girish Chandra Murmu, okay? Uh, Please remember that CAG is different from CGA. Okay. Please write what is the full form of CGA and who is the present CGA and what is CGA. Okay. I am giving you this homework CGA. Okay. Here we are talking about CAG. Okay. It's different. Even CGA is also important one. And the next is Attorney General, which was the answer to our question. Attorney General of India is the Indian government's chief legal advisor and is its chief advocate in the courts. Now, if somebody asks you that who is Indian government's chief advocate in the court, then it is Attorney General. Who is the present Attorney General? It's R. Venkatramani and the provision for Attorney General is given under the Article 76 of the Indian Constitution. Okay, yeah. and Attorney General is appointed by President of India. Okay, now coming to Solicitor General. Now, Solicitor General is subordinate to the Attorney General and second highest law officer in the country, Solicitor General. Okay, Attorney General is the highest law officer, which was the answer to our question. And uh, second highest law officer is the Solicitor General. Who is the present Solicitor General? He is Tusar Mehta right now. Okay, again, as on December 2022, by the time I'm uploading this video. And talking about Advocate General, now there is a difference between Advocate General and Attorney General. Uh, the highest law officer of the state is known as Advocate General. Okay, highest law officer of the country is, of course, uh, Attorney General. But the highest law officer of the state is Advocate General. Okay, the Constitution of India, Article 165 gives this provision. Okay, he or she is the highest law officer in the state. So, there are various Advocate General for uh, different states. So, there is no one name. So, uh, I hope it's clear. Uh, Advocate General uh, corresponds to the Attorney General of India. Okay. So, I hope it's clear about all these topics. Now, the second question. Which one of the following articles deals with the appointment of Prime Ministers and other Ministers? The options are there and your time begins now. Article 76, Article 74, Article 77, Article 72. Appointment of Prime Minister and other Ministers. The correct answer is Article 75. Okay. In the Constitution of India, the Prime Minister is mentioned in only four of its articles. And which are those articles? Article 74, 75, 78, and 366. Okay. And Article 75 talks about the appointment of Prime Ministers and also the other ministers. Fine. Next. Who among the following shall communicate to the President of all the decisions of the Council of Ministers under Article 78? The options are there and your time begins now. All the decisions of the Council of Ministers is communicated to the President under Article 78 by whom? Home Minister, Prime Minister, Attorney General or Finance Minister? 
the correct answer is prime minister okay according to the article 78 of our constitution the prime minister is duty bound to communicate all decisions of his council of ministers in respect of the affairs of the union and the proposal of the enactments laws and legislations to the president okay hope it's clear next question the supreme court of india at present contains how many number of judges as on 2022 the options are there and your time begins now how many number of judges 25 judges 20 judges 31 judges or 30 judges the correct answer is 31 judges currently uh, the supreme court of india comprises of chief justice okay so he is one and 30 other judges so which comprises to 30 plus 1 which gives 31 okay so i hope it's clear 30 judges and one uh, chief justice of india fine next which article of the constitution of india provides the composition and jurisdiction of the supreme court of india the options are there and your time begins article 137 to 141 article 144 article 1 26 or article 124 the correct answer is article 124 okay the composition of the supreme court is laid down in the clause 1 of article 124 which states that the supreme court shall consist of the chief justice of india and 33 other judges okay hope it's clear next question mr dy chandrachur who is the current chief justice of india right he is uh, which chief justice of india the options are there and your time begins now which Chief Justice of India? Before him, it was uh, N.V. Ramana. Uh, sorry, uh, Uday Umesh Lalit, UU Lalit. And before him, it was N.V. Ramana. And now it's D.Y. Chandrachur. D.Y. Chandrachur is the 50th CGI of India. N.V. Ramana was 40th CGI. Uday Umesh Lalit or UU Lalit was the 49th CGI. And now D.Y. Chandrachur is the 58th CGI. Okay. So I hope it's clear. His full name is Dhananjaya Y. Chandrachur. Okay. So hope it's clear he is the present chief justice of supreme court of india next the impeachment of the president is carried by which one of the following impeachment of president the options are there and your time begins now attorney general members of the legislature parliament or prime minister time is over the impeachment of the president can only be carried by parliament what is impeachment impeachment it's a process by which a legislative body or a legally constituted tribunal initiates charge against a public official or the misconduct misconduct in our case it's president okay and president is impeached only by the prime minister uh, sorry parliament okay only by the parliament so uh, this is provided under article 61 of the indian constitution okay so remember this as well next question which one of the following are known as pressure groups the options are there and your time begins now trade unions caste groups tribal organizations or all of the above pressure groups pressure groups are all of these okay trade unions caste groups tribal organizations and all of these are pressure groups it is a group of people who are organized actively for promoting and defending their common interest okay it is called so okay why it is uh, called pressure group because it attempts to bring a change in public policy by exerting pressure to the government that's why they are known as pressure groups okay it acts as an uh, as a liaison on uh, between the government and its members the pressure groups are also called interest groups okay sometimes they are also known as interest groups or vested groups they are different from political parties as they neither contest election nor try to capture political power okay so they are not in any political motivation okay they are concerned with uh, specific programs okay the answer got repeat where is it yeah they are concerned with the specific programs and issues and their activities are confined to the protection and promotion of the interest of their members by influencing the government okay so these are the pressure groups i think the answer was revealed to this question the first parliamentary forum on water conservation and management constituted it was constituted in the year 2005 okay the parliamentary forum on water conservation and management was constituted in 2005 okay let's go to next question when was the first parliamentary forum on youth constituted first parliamentary forum on youth was constituted in which year 2010 2008 2006 or 
1985. First parliamentary forum on youth was constituted in the year 2006. Okay, important. Now we come to government schemes. Uh, no, I think we've already discussed government schemes. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's government schemes only. Sorry for the confusion. Yeah, government schemes now. PM Swanidhi scheme is for uh, which of this? PM Swanidhi scheme. Doctors, electricians, street vendors, or beggars? PM Swanidhi scheme is for street vendors. Why? Uh, what is PM Swanidhi? It's Pradhan Mantri Street Vendors Atma Nirbhar Nidhi Yojana. So that's why it's known as PM Swanidhi. Okay. SV for street vendors. And it was launched by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs on June 1, 2020 for providing affordable working capital loan to street vendors to resume their livelihood that has had been adversely affected due to COVID-19 lockdown. So it's a post-COVID scheme for street vendors. Okay, the duration of scheme initially was until March 2022 only, but now it has been extended till December 2024. So this can be asked. Okay, it's a current affairs news. Uh, till when the PM uh, street vendor Atmanirbhar Nidhi Yojana PM Swanidhi scheme has been extended, then it is till December 2024. Okay, so hope it's clear. Let's go to the next question. The implementing agency of PM Swanidhi scheme, okay, related to this scheme only, which is the implementing agency? Is it SEDB? Is it NABARD? Is it SBI? Or is it RBI? The implementing agency is SEDB. What is SEDB? It's uh, the full form of SIDB is Small Industries Development Bank of India. Talking more about PM Swanidhi scheme, uh, through this scheme, vendors can avail a working capital loan up to 10,000. So this can also be asked that up to how much vendors can avail the loan, they can uh, get a working capital loan up to 10,000 and it is repayable in monthly installments in the tenure of one year. Okay, so on a monthly basis, they can repay on timely or early repayment of the loan and interest subsidy of 7% per annum okay 7% per annum is the interest subsidy which will be credited to the uh, bank account of the street vendor okay credited to the bank account of street vendor or the beneficiary okay, whichever we may call uh, through direct benefit transfer on a quarterly basis okay it's for the early repayment and there is no penalty for early re early re uh, repayment the scheme promoted digital transaction through cashback initiative up to an amount up to rupees 100 per month. So if they uh, pay, uh, pay digitally uh, their installments, their premiums, uh, their loan repayments, then they'll get up to rupees 100 per month. Okay, uh, as for digital transaction initiative. Okay, the vendors can avail the facility of escalation of the credit limit on time in early repayment of the loan so if they repay the loan early then their credit limit will be extended okay initially it's ten thousand and it can be extended uh, depending on their credit history fine so in the implementing agency is said which is small industries development bank of india can anyone tell where is the headquarter of said okay can be asked next question mission karma yogi was launched in which year mission karma yogi the options are there and your time begins now mission karma yogi was initiated or the law or launched in which year or which date 2nd september 2018 2nd september 2020 2nd september 2022 or it has not been launched yet the correct answer is two years before that is 2nd of september 2020 what is mission karma yogi it's a national program for civil services capacity building okay npcs cb it is a reform in indian bureaucracy so it is basically related to indian bureaucracy okay especially relating to the uh, grade a officers that is ias ips etc okay uh, union cabinet had launched it on 2nd september 2020 the mission intends to lay down the foundation of the indian civil servants capacity building and aim to enhance governance so more facts about it it was launched by union cabinet it aims to establish the new national architecture for the civil services capacity building. It covers around 46 lakh central employees between 2020 to 2025. Okay, so it, it, it is its aim to cover all these employees. Uh, SPV, that is special purpose vehicle, which would be a non 
profit company it has been set up under the companies act 2013 to run this mission so it can be asked okay to run this mission karmi yogi what has been set up a special purpose vehicle uh, has been set up under the companies act 2013 so you can also remember that company act was established in 2013 okay another static fact here and this spv will manage izot what is izot it is an online training digital platform and this izot is managed by this spv fine next question in which year was startup india seed fund scheme launched startup india seed fund scheme 2019 2020 2021 or 2022 sisfs it is its abbreviation it's not startup india only okay it's startup india seed fund scheme the correct answer is 2021 okay it aims to provide financial assistance to startup for proofs of concept prototype development product trials market entry and commercialization okay so hope it's clear it was launched in 2021 okay april 1 2021 next question samarth scheme is related to what samarth scheme it's a recent scheme okay recent scheme it was uh, it is related to what first of all let's answer this It is related to women entrepreneurship. Okay, on the occasion of International Women's Day, will which falls on 8th of March 2022, I think every one of you know. Okay, Union Minister of MSME, who is Narayan Rani, he have launched a special entrepreneurship promotion drive for women, and which is Samarth. Okay, hope it's clear. Next question, next topic. We have eminent personalities. It's continuation from day 26. Who is also known as Dina Bandhu? The options are there, and your time begins now. Dina Bandhu. C.F. Andrews, William Bentick, Lord Dalhousie, or Macaulay, Dina Bandhu. Dina Bandhu was C.F. Andrews, whose full name is Charles Fear Andrews, also known as Dina Bandhu. It was given, uh, this name was given to him by Mahatma Gandhi for his contribution to the Indian freedom struggle. Okay, Dina Bandhu, C.F. Andrews. Who is also known as Iron Lady of India. This is easy, I think you all can answer this. Iron Lady of India, Sarojini Naidu. Rani Lakshmi Bai, Indira Gandhi, or Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. The correct answer to this question is Indira Gandhi. Okay, Indira Gandhi is known as Iron Lady of India. Who is also known as Lok Nayak? The options are there, and your time begins now. Lok Nayak, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Lala Lajpat Rai, Jay Prakash Narayan, or Mahatma Gandhi. Lok Nayak was Jai Prakash Narai. Okay. Next question. Who is also known as Man of Peace? I think this also you can answer. Man of Peace. Jawaharlal Nehru. Lal Bahadur Shastri. Jai Prakash Narayan or Mahatma Gandhi. Man of Peace was Lal Bahadur Shastri. Okay. Lal Bahadur Shastri. Next. The last question. Okay. There is no last question. Yeah. Here, here it is. Who is also known as Shakespeare of India? Shakespeare of India. Tulsi Das, Kali Das, Sur Das or Prem Chand. Shakespeare of India is Kali Das, a 5th century poet. Okay. So with this we complete the session. Please write how much did we score out of 20. Let us revise all these questions quickly. From polity, the first question was first law officer of government of India is attorney general. We saw, okay, RC under secretary. We talked about controller and auditor general who is Grish Chandra Murmu, attorney general R. Vain Kataramani, solicitor general Tushar Mehta. Next, uh, <coughs> article deals with the appointment of prime minister. It's article 75. Uh, who shall communicate to president of all decision of council of ministers? It's prime minister. We saw that at present, Supreme Court has 31 judges, one chief justice, and uh, 30 other judges. We saw that uh, Article 124 of Constitution provides composition and jurisdiction of Supreme Court of India. D.Y. Chandrasud is 58th CGI. U.U. Lalit was 49th. The impeachment of President can be carried forward by Parliament. Pressure groups are all of the above, that is trade unions, caste groups and tribal organizations. First Parliamentary Forum on Water Conservation was in 2005. First Parliamentary Forum on Youth was constituted in 2006. Uh, government schemes pm swanidhi scheme is for street vendors the full form is pradhan mantri street vendor atmanirbhar nidhi yojana uh, launched by ministry of housing and affairs on june 1 2020 providing affordable working capital loan to the street vendors okay 
uh, this uh, we also saw that this uh, scheme was initially till March 2022, but now it has been extended till December 2024. Okay, important. So the implementing agency of PM Swani, the scheme was SIDBI, that is Small Industries Development Bank of India. Initially, 10,000 uh, amounting to 10,000 rupees loan will be given to the street vendors. Okay, repayable in monthly installments up to the tenure of one year. Okay, next, Mission Karma Yogi was launched on 2nd of September 2022. Uh, this was it. Startup India Seed Fund scheme was launched in 2021. Samarth scheme is related to women entrepreneurship launched by MSME Minister Narayan Rane on International Women's Day in 8th of March 2022. Okay, Samarth. Eminent personalities Dina Bandhu, CF Andrews, and Lady of India Indira Gandhi, Lok Nayak, Jai Prakash Narayan, Man of Peace Lal Badur Shastri, and Shakespeare of India, Ali Das. So we complete the session. I hope you like the session thank you so much don't forget to like share and subscribe to ssc second for pdf message seven seven nine seven zero five six five nine bye bye